This is going to be a fun test. We've got four of the top performing batteries on the market. We've got the Samsung 25R, the LG HE4, and the Sony VTC4. These are all 18650 cells. Then we've got the Sony VTC6A. This is a 2170 cell. That's 21 millimeters diameter and 70 millimeters long. The 18650 batteries are 18 millimeters in diameter and 65 millimeters long. And then we've also got some household variety batteries, an Energizer AA battery and a Samsung Eneloop AA battery. And we'll see how these perform. Let's get into the test. Batteries compare against the big boys and we'll see who is the best when it comes to absolute current draw. We're gonna take it at five amp, inc five amp increments and we're gonna step it up until it drops below two voltage or two volts. And we're gonna see how much current we can get out of these in five second bursts. I've updated my apparatus here. I've got heavier gauge. I went from 12 gauge wire to eight gauge. I've got voltage directly connected to the terminal instead of back at the load bank. So it should get a more accurate voltage reading. So that's why I'm gonna redo these two. I've already done these two in a previous video, but I'm gonna redo them with this setup so we can directly compare all of these batteries back to back. So let's see how it goes. I'm gonna wrap it up here. Okay, here's our first test. We're set at five amps. The current voltage is 4.18. We're gonna be watching our actual current here. This is actual current actual voltage, and then this is the power through the battery. We'll do each for five seconds. This is the Samsung 25R. No sweat. We'll go up to 10 amps. And here's our temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, five, amp, five seconds. No problem. 15 amps for five seconds. No sweat. This is what these are rated for, 25 amps. So now we're exceeding the rated capacity or the rated current of the battery, but we're only doing it for five seconds. And we're watching temperature. Well, 65, see we're doing good on temperature. 60C is where a lot of them kind of, they rate it at, so we don't, gonna, don't wanna go too much above 60 Celsius. Let it cool down a little bit and we'll hit it again. Five seconds. That's pretty amazing. 70 amps. Just in case. Five seconds. Oh, there it was. Drop below two volts. We'll call it there, 70 amps. Ooh, it's a bit warm. Ah, Ooh. let that cool off for a bit, man. Now it's time for the HE4, 1865. Okay, let's see if we can beat 70 amps in five amp increments, five seconds. Next point, next point, 20 amps. Seventy amps. This is where Samsung bit the dust. <laughs> no problem. All right, LG, let's see what you got. 75 amps. Well, let's wait a little bit. We're still climbing on the temperature. I wonder if we'll hit 60. Is it coming down? All right, it's coming down. All right, we're gonna go over 60 on this one. Let's hit it, five seconds. Oh, I don't know. I, I thought I saw it flash two, or below two, but it's so close. Uh, we'll see what it looks like in the video review, but let's go 80 while we're here. No point in wasting a data point. 80 amps, but I think we're going to need to let it cool down a little bit. All right, when it goes below 60, we'll hit it. It's dropping fast. All right, 
80 amps. Five seconds. Yep, that definitely dropped below two. Well, that's it. So we had 70 amps, 75, maybe 80, kind of toss up there. Now let's see how the Sony Murata, supposedly these are the highest rated. See, I got a data sheet here. So here's our data sheet. You can see at 30 amps right here is the highest they test it to and they go all the way to discharge at 30 amps. So if you can drain it continuously at 30 amps, you can obviously go higher if you're just doing five seconds. So that is what we're gonna do. Another thing is the temperature. If you look here, as you go higher in temperature, you get a more full discharge and you maintain higher voltage throughout the discharge curve. So this highest curve out here at the end is at 60 degrees Celsius. So as we get towards the end and we're right around 60, we may be optimal for maximum discharge. They don't go above 60, so I don't know if it gets any better, but just looking at the trend here, it seems to get less and less of a difference as you get higher in temperature. So there's not much of a difference between 45C and 60. They're almost right on top of each other. So maybe 60 is the asymptotical ideal current temperature. Let's try it with the Sony here. I'm gonna have some high expectations for this one, so we'll see how it does. Supposedly the best high current battery you can get on the market. Wrap it nice and tight. I'm using some high temperature Kapton tape so it doesn't come loose. All right, now let's see if we can get to 80 amps and beyond. Let's drop back down to five. Five amps for five seconds. Obviously no sweat. And I don't want to jump right up. We'll map out these data points. Maybe I can share it at the end of the video. A little Excel file showing these overlaid and what they look like. 10 amps. Ooh, not even close. We got tons of headroom here. 75 amps. This is amazing. I don't know, I can already say I'm, I'm a big fan of this Sony Murata battery here. Temperature's still climbing. We'll let it crest a little bit to be fair. We let the other ones cool down a lot more by this time. So this is the current where the LG was right at the verge. Maybe it crossed over two volts. All right, five seconds. 80 amps. All right, this for sure knocked out the LG HE4. <laughs> oh gosh, no problem. 85 amps, this is insane. I mean, just for reference, a house has got maybe 100 amp service, maybe 200. Now that's at a higher voltage, but still, let's just say you got an old house and you got 100 amp electrical service. This battery is putting out almost the same current as what's wired to your house. Albeit at three volts instead of 200 plus. All right, here we go, five seconds. 90 amps, five seconds. And just for reference, I think I picked up these cells at $5 each. These I got on an incredible sale. I bought a bunch for $2 each. And these I think are three or four dollars a piece and they might be more like five dollars now so these are probably all right around five dollars and then this larger 2170 cell that was uh ten dollars so twice the price is one of these all right five seconds 100 amps i mean there's a marginal improvement from the lg chem over the samsung but this thing is just killing them five seconds Yep, that did it. That was it. 100 amp. So it went 70, 75-ish, 80, 100 amp. Now let's see what the big guy can do.
Okay, now we're going from 2100 milliamp hours or 2.1 amp hours to 4.1 amp hours. So almost double the amp hours. We're already at twice the price, $5, $10. So should do twice as much, right? I wish. I doubt we'll get to 200 amps. But if we did, then it would be worth it. But maybe it's better to buy two of these. Maybe there's a reason why Tesla's plaid mode uses these smaller batteries for their extreme current draw instead of these newer 2170. I guess we're about to find out. Five amps. Actually, this is such a larger battery. I wonder if we should go 10 amp increments. I think we'll do that, we'll do 10 amps. Otherwise this could take forever. Yeah, it takes a lot more to get the heat out. I mean, obviously if you look at these two batteries, two of these for the same capacity is going to have a lot more surface area than just one of these. So even if we could make it to 200, which I don't think we would, you'd have to have a lot better cooling system on something like this. All right, it's starting to come back down. Definitely drop below two. All right, that's it. I'm calling it. All right, we'll try this guy first. So gently used, um, by that I mean it's been around for a few years in and out of all kinds of electronic devices. Just for consistency, we'll put the thermal couple on here, but I'm not really expecting much. I think it'll conk out long before it gets any heat in it. Now, just for reference, these are like a third of the voltage of these, but their capacity is actually pretty similar. They're around 2000. So this one's 2300 milliamp hours. And this one is 1900 milliamp hours. So almost the same amp hours as these bigger ones, just a third the voltage. So, you know, third the size, a third the voltage. So power density, it's probably not quite as good, but let's see how they compare when we drain them. All the way down to, gosh, I don't even know if five amps is fair. We'll try it. We'll go right up to five amps. We'll see if it can even put out five amps. Five amps for five seconds. Yeah, it held five amps. Let's try 10, 10 amps for five seconds. Yeah, it dropped down to like one volt, so we're getting 10 watts. <laughs> Not much, these are all getting well over 100. So let's see if we can go 15, 15 amps. And you see temperature, probably not gonna do nothing. Yeah, we got a little over 10, 10 watts still. Keep going. Now these you can drain all the way, so there's no safety hazard, but these lithium batteries, you don't want to drain them. Really, they recommend, I think, two and a half volts. It's kind of your cutoff, maybe a little lower. But since we are doing just huge burst of power and just dropping below that briefly, I went all the way down to two. But again, we took these way past the recommended current and voltage drop, just to see what they would do. 20 amps for five seconds. You know, so our volts dropped so much, we didn't really get much more power out. This might be kind of the limit. We are getting the current, but not the power. 25 amps, five seconds. Thirty amps, five seconds. Again, I don't see power going up. We're just dropping the voltage. We're not really doing much here. Five seconds. Yeah, so that time we actually got less power out. Let's see if we drop back to 20. Do we get more power out? Yeah, we're getting more power out. So that was kind of the limit. Somewhere just kind of ass and, you know, reaches a, a peak and that's really all you're going to get out of it. So, yeah. Let's see what happens if we just leave it on. Let's see if we get more power by going down. 
13, it's kind of holding at 13. Okay, it's going down, 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 down. So somewhere around 13, let's see if we can get higher than 13 watts. 13, 14, 14, and it starts dropping again. Go back down. 14, so somewhere around 20 amps is kind of where we're getting the most power out of the battery, but our voltage is about half of what we started at. So that's about it. Let's see, is it getting warm? Yeah. Not really. I mean, there's just not that much power there. 13 watts, it's nothing. I'll leave that thermocouple on that one since we're not getting them very high. And we'll just jump right to this one. Five amps. Actually, that one's still got some heat in it. 40, 40 C. Yeah, looks like we're getting less power out of this Energizer. 25. So, Antelope has less capacity, 1.9 amp hours. Energizer has more capacity at, what was it, 2300 milliamp hours. But as far as current draw, the uh, Panasonic was better. So, it's kind of interesting. I think we're done. And now for the best part, we've got the results. On the vertical axis to the left, we have volts starting off at 4.2. And at the bottom axis, we have amps extending all the way out to 150 amps. That was done by the Sony VTC6A. That's a 2170 cell, twice as large as the other 18650s, but it did not perform twice as good. The surprise here was the Sony VTC4. Not only did it extend all the way out to 100 amps, but across the whole range, it had significantly higher voltage. And then if we drop down to the other two, the LG HE4 and the Samsung 25R, they're both very similar with the LG having a slight edge at the beginning. And then midway or towards the end, you can see a bump in the LG curve. That was due to it being allowed to cool down. It was getting quite hot. So it recovered voltage and started the test and ended the test with a higher voltage. Similarly, the Samsung 25R at the 60 amp mark was also allowed to cool down and you can see the corresponding bump in the curve there. So you can kind of ignore those outliers as the test was not perfectly consistent. Ideally, you'd want to do it at a set temperature for each test point. Then looking down to the other cells, the Energizer and the Eneloop, you can see the Eneloop had higher voltage throughout the test. Although the Energizer has higher uh, amp hour capacity, so one has a little more energy in it and the other has better power output. So as expected. And now we have the power curves. On the left we have power going up to 300 watts. In the bottom the same amp curve all the way out to 150 amps. And obviously the Sony VTC6A, the yellow, outperformed in power and total current. Although not too far off from the Sony VTC4, that one really did well. Got 200 watts peak, just shy of its current max current draw of 100 amps. So that's quite incredible. And then you've got the orange LG and the blue Samsung just below it. Again, they did not perform as well as the Sony, but they did quite well. And they have the same bumps at the points where they were allowed to cool. And at the very bottom, you have the AA Antelope and the Energizer. They look almost identical due to the scale of the graph here, but a little bit more power out of the Antelope, although the Energizer has more total capacity. So that's it. That's the final results, testing between some of the highest power 18650 cells, along with the highest power 2170, and comparing them to your regular household AA batteries. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed it.